People often talk about systems being simple or complex. But I would argue that it's not a system that's simple or complex, but what you want to know about the system. For example, are cellular automata simple or complex systems? Well, it depends on what you want to know. For example, if you wanted to know, given some initial state S of the cellular automaton, what will the state be at time T? This may or may not be a complex question. Or does a given state S have a predecessor, a state from which it came? On a finite lattice, is S on a periodic orbit that will eventually return to S? Or on an infinite lattice, will S ever die out? That is, the entire lattice simply becomes black for all time. It turns out that each of these questions has vastly different complexity. The first one can be solved in polynomial time because you simply take the state S and evolve it forward for T time steps. The second one is in NP because if I show you the predecessor state, it's easy to check that S in fact follows from its predecessor. And it turns out that this problem is NP complete, so it's as hard as any problem in NP. The third one is in polynomial space because on a finite lattice, you can just run the state S forward for all time, and there are only finitely many possible configurations you can get to. So you only actually have to run this for a finite amount of time, but the key thing is the amount of space you have to use is no more than the size of the lattice. And then you just check, did you ever hit S again after you initially left S? And it turns out that this problem is in fact P-space complete. So it's as hard as any problem that can be solved in polynomial space. And finally, the last problem is uncomputable. It's as hard as the halting problem. So the question is not whether a given system is complex, but whether what you want to know about the system is complex. Complex systems, it turns out, can give us some insight into why resolving P versus NP is so hard. The standard answer is that showing that P is not equal to NP involves showing that all possible polynomial time algorithms can't solve an NP complete problem, which itself is a big enough task. But then you notice that algorithms can essentially simulate an arbitrary system, physical system, to get their output. So Showing P not equal NP involves showing that no physical system can solve an NP complete problem in polynomial time, including complex systems. In the other direction, complex systems can simulate algorithms. So Cook and Wolfram, for example, showed that cellular automaton are able to compute Turing universal algorithms or arbitrary algorithms. Rendell showed that Conway's Game of Life, a particularly intriguing two-dimensional cellular automaton, could also simulate a universal computer. And Chris Moore showed that one can even simulate Turing machines in simple, continuous, dynamical systems. So is it that complex systems are hard to understand because they can simulate arbitrary com computation? Or is it that computation is hard to understand because it can simulate arbitrary complex systems? Before coming to the answer, let me add one more idea to the mix, which is that not only can algorithms simulate complex systems and complex systems simulate algorithms, but algorithms are complex systems. We can view each individual algorithm as a specification for the dynamics of a computer and thereby view it as a complex dynamical system. And as we've seen, algorithms can essentially be as complicated as any complex system you want because most complex systems are studied by being simulated by an algorithm anyways. So not only are algorithms themselves complex systems, they're essentially universal complex systems. So I think the answer to our question is that complex systems and computational complexity and algorithms are really two sides of the same coin. Complex systems are hard to understand partially because they can simulate arbitrary computations, and computation is hard to understand partially because it can simulate arbitrary complex system. Now, this of course begs the question of why study computational complexity at all? Why not just stick with some other kind of complex system? But I think there are good reasons for this. In studying general complex systems, research typically proceeds in the following fashion. This is somewhat of a caricature, but it serves to get the point across. 
there's typically a real world system that you're interested in studying. You have to make a model of that system. You have to study the mathematical model to generate predictions or observations or other ideas, and then compare those predictions or observations with the real world system and iterate. Each of these three aspects of the research, making the model, generating the predictions or observations, and comparing the predictions or observations with the real world system is fraught with difficulty. Making a model is essentially the entire field of mathematical modeling and covers broad swaths of applied mathematics and science. Understanding the model is difficult mathematics, and this is where we run into things like nonlinearity and chaos and strange attractors and unpredictability. And even comparing the predictions or observations of the model with the real world can be difficult, particularly when the real world system is something you can't run experiments on, like an economy or an ecosystem. But in computational complexity, the picture looks more like this. The real world system and the model essentially agree. If you prove a theorem that something happens in an algorithm, that thing actually happens when the algorithm is run on a computer or a robot. So studying computational complexity allows us to focus on the mathematics and simplifies many of the tasks of research. Furthermore, computational complexity is one of the few areas of complex systems that has been extremely rigorously developed. So it's a good area in which to further develop tools, techniques, and theories for understanding complex systems in general.